Hey there, it's Julie with foodstoragemadeeasy.net and I'm really excited to be showing you how to use the new three-month Excel worksheet to plan your three-month food supply. Now I'm a little bit embarrassed because I had to admit that the old one we had, while it worked really well, wasn't that easy. And it just dawned on me the other day that I could do it this way and it would be way easier to understand and user friendly. So I admitted I was wrong and I remade it and I'm excited to share it with you. So let's get started. To get the spreadsheet to plan your three month food supply, you go to foodstoragemadeeasy.net and then you hit on the baby steps page. And when you get to the baby steps page, you're going to want to hit on baby steps three. And on baby steps three, we are going to have the new Excel spreadsheet down in here. So you want to download that and when you get it, come on back and here we're going to go. We're going to start. So up in the corner here we have the steps outlined. So in case you need to refer back to it, go ahead. So the first step is to fill out the meal ideas you want for three months. And now in this plan what we do is we, we plan 30 days and then the spreadsheet automatically, so don't, don't do this, but it automatically calculates, multiplies each ingredient by three to get the full three months. So we plan for a month and then it gets the full three months. So I'm going to go ahead and show you for dinners because dinners are a little bit more, more exciting and have more ingredients. So if you scroll over, you'll get to dinners. And so I'm going to plan, let's say, spaghetti one day and then just click on that cell and you write in what you're planning, maybe chili another day and then the next cell click on it and let's say a rice bake with chicken. Okay, so that is the first thing. Then the next thing you're going to want to do, it says up here, is fill out the ingredients you will need for those meals um, in this first column, column A over here. So let's go back to those so we can see what they were. Now here I'm going to go ahead and say, this is for your three month supply. So you're not necessarily going to put your fresh produce or your milk or even your long term food, long -term food storage. You can if you want, but it, you know, with wheat and rice and oats and beans, you know, maybe you're going to have so much, so much of it on hand, you're planning your, your supply with your actual long term supply, long term food storage calculator. So that's up to you whether or not you want to put long term in or even the produce, but this mostly is for the three month stuff, the canned goods, you know, that kind of thing. So for spaghetti, I'm just going to go hit, ahead and put in spaghetti noodles as an ingredient. Uh, and then for, and then one pound of ground beef, spaghetti sauce, let's say if we were to have a can of corn with that meal. Now chili, uh, again, a pound of ground beef. However, if it's already there, I'm not going to go ahead and write it again. This ingredients list is the master list, and it, you only put each ingredient in once. And then a can of tomatoes, and then a can of beans if you purchase beans in your cans. Uh, if you do it in your long term food storage, again, you can decide whether or not you want that in here. Uh, and then chili seasoning mix. Uh, notice I'm putting it in the you know how much of it so a can of corn or a can of tomatoes a can of beans I should have put a can of corn and then for the rice bake let's go ahead and say chicken I put in the stuff I can leave in my freezer even though it's you know fresh I put it if I put it in my freezer then I'll count it in this plan um, and then I need an onion soup mix for that I'm not going to put in rice because I have that in my long term food storage and I track that differently with the food storage calculator uh, which we'll be getting into more later so anyway, so those are all the ingredients that I would need for those meals. And then I simply come over here, and in the spaghetti column itself, I put the quantity that I will need in that meal. So for spaghetti noodles, we have a small family. I actually only need half a box of spaghetti noodles when we have spaghetti. So I put 0.5. For a pound of ground beef, we use a whole one, so I use one. Spaghetti sauce, I use a whole one. Again, I should have put here, instead of spaghetti sauce, put can of spaghetti sauce because this is, you know, going to be my master list, and then one can of corn, and that's it. Now, so I go to chili. For chili, I don't use spaghetti noodles. I do use a, can, a pound of ground beef. I don't use a can of spaghetti sauce. Let's say I do have corn. Put one there. A uh, can of tomatoes, and then a can of beans, and one chili seasoning mix. So that's that meal there. Those are all the ingredients I need. And as you can see, actually I'll wait for that. Let's do rice bake real fast. Rice bake, 
Um, chicken breast, I would need, let's say, four, and then onion soup mix, one. So the next step is to watch how all of these things filled out themselves automatically. I have the number I need for the one month total. Automatically, it made times multiplied by three to get the three month total. Now, the next thing that this is kind of an extra bonus you can do, if you want to put in the price and size, you can use this as a tracking sheet for sales. So for example, if ground beef is normally, you know, $2.99 a pound, so that's $2.99 for one pound, then it multiplies how much I'll need to spend to get three months worth of ground beef. And then the next column, if I know I already have one pound of ground beef in my freezer, I can go ahead and put one. So now I know I only actually need to purchase five. So if you do the price and size, you're going to get the price you need for three months. And if you do how many you have on hand, you'll have an inventory tracking sheet also. So those are optional, but they're kind of nice because then what you can do is go ahead and print and it'll print out exactly how many you need. You can shove, you know, shove this in your food storage room. Every time you go shopping, you can change it or you can change it on the spreadsheet on the computer itself and you'll know how many you still need to buy. So then it makes it a real tangible plan for you. Um, it's pretty simple. If you have any questions, feel free to email us at info at foodstoragemadeeasy.net and have fun with this. And just as a side note for printing for you guys, when you go ahead and print it, I've set it up so that it only prints from here over on the first page. Depending on how many ingredients you have, it may or may not be one or two pages. It can print out these other side things, but unless you're a real Excel expert, it can end up printing out hundreds of pages. You might want to be careful. So go ahead and say when you're printing to print page one through two and see what happens. And if you need to print page three, then go ahead and do that. Um, again, if you have any more questions about you know advanced printing stuff, you can email us and I can try to walk you through it. But just for the basic, I wanted to let you know what it was. And good luck and let us know how it goes.